Construct an integer array with the following elements. We need to find out frequency of each unique element. For an example, the frequency of 25 is 2, the frequency of 16 is 1, frequency of 19 is 2, and the frequency of 24 is 1. To find out this one, we need an additional array to load the frequencies. And the size of this additional array is the same size of the given input array, as in the way it is shown here. And initialize this additional array with value 1. Now the actual logic starts. We need two loops which are nested. At parent level, we'll catch the element and at the child level, we'll try to compare the element that is pointed by parent level with the each element. Wherever there is a match, we increment the corresponding frequency value. For an example, 25 is compared with all rest of the elements starting from 16 to 19. There is a match that occurred three times. So the frequency value of 25 will be three, as in the way it is shown here. And by the way, by the next time, to avoid the unnecessary comparisons with the value that is already occurred, we'll make the corresponding frequency value of the values which are already done as zero, as in the way it is shown here. In the same way, we'll proceed with the element 16. 16 is now compared with the rest of the elements starting from 25 to 19. There is no match, so the frequency of 16 is set as 1. No change. Here is a point we need to understand. Since 25, the comparison is already done. To know that 25 comparisons are already completed, the corresponding frequency value was already made it as 0. So in the loop, we will test the frequency value as 0. In case if any particular element's frequency value is 0, then the additional comparisons are not done for that particular element. We will simply continue the loop. So when we continue the loop, the element 19. The same job is done for the element 19 and uh, the count is incremented to 2. You can notice the second occurrence of 19's frequency is set as 0. When we continue for the rest of the elements 25 and 19, since their frequencies are set as 0, they are not compared. The final result of this particular given example is the frequency of 25 is 3, frequency of 16 is 1, and the frequency of 19 is 2. For those elements whose frequency is 0, meaning that they are already repeated and duplicate values, which need not to be shown as part of the output. Now let's write the program and execute it. Let the file name be f.c. Let's create an input array. Let the size, initial size be 10. And let's create an additional frequency array. And then let the size be the same as in the way I have taken for the input array A. Let us ask user to enter the number of values and let us store in a variable called as n. For looping purpose, I am taking ij. Ask the user to enter number of values. The number of values that are entered by the user, let us store them in a variable n. Based on the value n, let us store the values into the array. Before that, let us ask user to enter values. Upon seeing the statement, user will try to enter the values. Let us store them in array. i equals to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. So we should make sure that user gives the n value not exceeding 10, which is the actual higher bound limit of the array size. Let's read the value each time in a location address of a of i. Here we'll use slight intelligence. In the same point of time, we'll try to initialize the frequency array with value 1. Now, at a time, you will get all the values into the array and at the same time, all frequency elements of the corresponding elements will become as 1. Now, it's time to implement our logic. I'll be creating two loops, i loop and j loop. i is parent loop and j is child loop. For i equals to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. Each time the condition is true, the element that is pointed with the parent loop i has to be compared with all remaining elements that are going to be pointed by inner loop j. But before I do that, I need to test an important condition that whenever the frequency of a particular element, if it is equals to 0, 
then to avoid the unnecessary comparison, say continue. Because for whatever the element whose frequency is zero, that constant as duplicate element. So for which counting need not to be repeated. By doing so, our output will vary. So it's very important to continue whenever we find an element whose frequency value is zero. Now let's start the inner loop j equals to i plus one because the child starts from the next position j less than n j plus plus. As in the way we have done for i loop, whenever your next element that is going to be compared, if that frequency is zero, then to avoid that unnecessary comparison, let's test if f of j, if it is equivalent to zero, then let's continue j. We don't want to execute anything after the continue statement. We want to increment the j value because it's an unnecessary thing to compare the element whose frequency value is already zero. Now let's compare a of i with a of j. If the comparison is successful, then the corresponding frequency value of i has to be incremented by one. At the same time, the corresponding j should become zero. Let's imagine the case where 25 was compared three times. When it was compared by the very first time, the frequency is incremented by one and wherever we find that the second 25, its corresponding frequency value has to made as zero. So whenever we find any duplicate value to make its corresponding frequency value as zero, we should make sure that f of j is zero. That's all, we are done with the main logic. If is closed here, the inner loop j is closed here and the upper loop i is closed here. Once after this is done, I want to show the outcome. Frequencies are like a simple for loop, which runs up to a number of times. Whenever you get inside, then make sure that you print. Frequency of percentile d is percentile d. Instead of first percentile d, I want the value of a of i and instead of second percentile d, I want the value of f of i. Very important condition, this printing has to be done only for the values whose frequency is not equivalent to zero. Only for the array elements whose frequency is not equivalent to zero, I am going to print the frequency values because I don't want to print the frequency values of duplicate elements because we want frequencies of only unique elements. Let's compile this program and execute it. GCC f dot c. This is small compiled error. Let's clear it. Line number thirty. Semicolon is missing here. No matter. We we'll save this one. Compilation is successful now. Let's execute. Let the number of values be seven. I'll give some random values. I'll make sure some values are repeated. 11, 12, 15, 12, 11, 6, 77. The frequency of 11 is 2. 11 appeared 2 times. The frequency of 12 is 2. And the frequency of 15 is 1. Frequency of 6 is also 1. And the frequency of 77 is 1. Our approach is working. And you can make the same program to work for characters as well. Instead of making it as an integer array, you can make it as a character array and execute the same program without making any kind of alterations. It will function for characters as well.